Um, all right. Well, we're excited to tell you about the sort of past, present, and future of Father McGivney's baseball program and fields. Uh, my name is Doug Bellhard. I'm the chairman of the school board at Father McGivney, and I'm here with Paul Johns, who's the head baseball coach. I'm happy to be here, Doug, and excited to talk about the future of uh, McGivney baseball. Awesome. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here. So let's uh, let's step into it here. Um, you know, our baseball program uh, is, has just three years old. It's had three seasons, and these were the young men that helped us kick it off um, three years ago. We're we're really proud of these guys. Sort of halfway through the school year, we said we need a baseball team, and uh, these students stepped up. Only a couple of them were, you know, like really like baseball players or enthusiasts. But we're so happy that 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 team started. Um, it was not the most successful on the field, <laughs> um, if you will. But I think all of those parents, all those kids, to tell you they were they were proud to be part of the first um, team that we had at McGivney. And then after that first year, Paul here uh, came in. Paul here came in as our um, head coach uh, to really establish a program at McGivney. And Paul, I don't know, you might you might speak to what what that first what your first year was like and the, your goals and what the team was like. Yeah, the first year um, we had some uh, players that were uh, new to baseball or hadn't played in a few years, and some others that um, had continually played. Um, so there was a, a good mix, uh, but we just tried to get them all on the same page and stress the fundamentals of baseball. We worked really hard on things like bunting. Um, fielding ground balls, uh, pitchers throwing strikes, uh, just the basic fundamentals in that first season. And we saw a lot of progression and, uh, and everything throughout the season, and they really improved. Yeah, and, um, and Paul, you guys were lucky enough that, that your first year, second year of the program, to get our first win. Yes, we won our first game, um, and then we ended up winning uh, three games throughout that season. Yeah, so, uh, so this is a three-win season, which was – Yes. Three, three wins more <laughs> than the first season, uh, but again, uh, was really excited. Now, then, something really special happened in Paul's second season last year of the program. And Paul, you might speak to the sort of sort of difference of you know having having a team two years in a row and what you can do with it. But here's here's that too. <laughs> yeah, then uh, in year two, we had uh, a lot of those same uh, players back, and they were no. Uh, they knew what to do in terms of the practice habits that we established and the expectations that uh, we wanted from them. And uh, they had a great work ethic and a great group of kids. And uh, we end up uh, playing a split schedule of JV games and some varsity teams. And uh, we finished uh, the season 11-1, and one, and we won our last 10 games of the season. Oh, um, um, <laughs> unbelievable. I don't think we've ever had a team ever given to do something like that. Uh, 11-1. and one. Um, in their third season, which prompted us to um, to have a full varsity uh, schedule this next spring as well. So just a, a lot of success with this team, you know. And we're seeing that really across McGivney. Here's some here's some photos of what happened this fall uh, with um, the the success of the soccer team and um, success of the volleyball team, you know. And, and seeing the same with our other sports here in the winter. And I tell you, it's been it's been a lot of fun at McGivney to watch to watch this, but. These teams, these teams that are being completing at the varsity level now for a couple of years and seeing the success have, a, have the, an advantage over the baseball team, which is that not only do they play on campus, they also practice on campus, um, which, is, which is a major advantage to them. The way that baseball works today is um, after school, our, uh, our players, especially our younger players, get on this bus. And our older players drive themselves to a field that's just no, uh, sort of central north of Edwardsville, um, uh, Big Hoppy field, which we're fortunate to play at. We're very, very, yes. very fortunate to, to have that opportunity. But this drive after school could just creates challenges for when practice can start. And as our principal would say, you know, some challenges of having kids drive this far, you know, especially, especially during a busy time of day when the other schools are letting out. And when they do get there to Big Hoppy, again, we're very proud to have this to play on this field, and, and it's great. Um, it only has one pitcher's mound, which is on the middle of the field itself. It doesn't have bullpens. It also doesn't have batting cages. And, you know, I, I don't know, Paul, you might speak to you got 30 kids and you're trying to run a practice and keep them all busy, the you know, challenges of, of even, a, you know, even a field like this. Right. Uh, Hoppy is a good field for playing games, but that's basically what it um, is – Four is just playing games in terms of a practice situation. It is a challenge to uh, get all the players, 25 to 30 players, 
the repetitions they need um, in baseball uh, to be successful, which is a big part of baseball is, you know, doing, getting those reps every day. Um, so like uh, Doug had mentioned, there's no batting cages, no extra in terms of practice facilities. Um, so we just make do with what we can. And, um, and it, it's just, uh, it'd be nice to have some, some practice uh, accommodations, I guess you'd say. Yeah. And I think what's even more fascinating, Paul, is um, now this is, this is when the, you know, the weather's nice and such like right. that. When the weather's not nice, uh, we end up we end up practicing right here in front, in front of the school in any grassy area we can find because the soccer field is being used by the girls yes. this this time of year. So just a, there's just there's just a lot of challenges for this team, and of course it has to be baseball or you know baseball needs space, <laughs> needs equipment for you know needs safety, yes. you know netting and stuff like that, and just just create some challenges. So you know so this is just the kind of reality of our baseball program now all of our sports started out off campus so you know so that's not um, that's not uncommon but now that we're in the fourth year of this sport and the success that we're having you know we feel this is this is a, a real need to solve these problems and we actually you know paul and i or uh, paul knew but i just kind of came to the realization that you know we practice about 40 times yes and we play about 10 home games so right so when you think of like a new field or something it's actually practicing that's even more you know more important yeah, the practice well, aspect is a, a critical part, I think, of it and the development of the team and the program as a whole. Yes. Yeah. So we need a solution for practicing on campus and playing on campus. Um, so um, if you take a look at our campus here and just kind of orient yourself, Old Troy Road is on the right. You know, that's where you park and enter the building there. You can see our current soccer field also in the top. The solution that we're looking at here is to build a varsity baseball field right there and oriented that direction, uh, ideal, ideal for the sun. And, um, and here's another, here's another view of what this field would look like. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really our expectation if we can to, to have, you know, the nicest natural playing field in the, in the area. That, that's what, that's what we're going for. And, um, you know, I think, I think it's pretty beautiful the way that it, that it uh, sits on campus, um, and you know, what, what it will add. But another thing too, some people would ask why natural field, you know, why, why not, um, turf or something else. And I think, I think we, you know, I think Paul, I think we, we like, I think people like playing on a natural field better. Right. And then the advantage, yes. I think of yes. turf people often say as well, what about, you know, rainouts and such like that? Well, I wanted to show you, there's this new technology. Uh, in terms of the way the field is designed. So this is what Hoppy looks like right yep. now, right, right after a rain. Yeah, significant rain event, yes. Right, so you say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, but look at but look at Hoppy, um, you know, just let, less about a half hour later or so. It's because this, this particular field has the technology that we want to have on our new field. You know, you might speak to that, Paul. Uh, yeah, yeah the, the Hoppy field um, for this engineered dirt mixture that allows for drainage um, in a, a greater capacity so it can take on a major rain event um, as you can see there in the photos um, and then drain out and be able to play a game um, in a short period of time and what we decided with the McGivney field was to do something similar but even better um, in terms of the engineered dirt and what we're using and putting that on top of the surface to allow for the drainage and it's a great surface for playability in terms of uh, the way the ball bounces uh, how it's true hops there's no bad hops if it's maintained properly and it's just going to be, like Doug said, uh, one of the top uh, fields in the Metro East area. Yeah, it's really it's really kind of the best of both worlds because not only is it that natural playing surface, but it also drains quickly. So yes. that, that's, that's what we're going for. Um, the other important thing to us is practice, which we're talking about. So this is a facility that would have five mounds. So not just the mound on the field, but mounds on the, in the bullpens as well, um, batting cages, um, other netting, you know, field equipment, storage, and such like that to be successful. But the other advantage of our campus is we have we have a big indoor facility as well between the gym, um, between some unfinished upstairs where we have some batting cages, not to mention the weight room, right, Paul? So with, with this on campus, rain or shine, I'm assuming you could keep 30 kids <laughs> busy. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. With any type of rain event with the uh... – um, indoor in the in the gym space we have and the weight room and the added batting cage area last year um, upstairs um, is just a huge benefit and then obviously um, the uh, outdoor facilities will be tremendous as well with being able to have uh, you know 
30 plus players um, busy and getting the reps and getting a lot of reps and um, what we're doing in terms of the batting cages and the mounds, the pitchers being able to throw um, on a daily basis and working on their mechanics is a, is a key to to our program and what we're, we're looking to do. Yeah, so this is an important program to us, already having success in this, this type of investment, even take it to another level. And if you go back and look at how we've got the um, baseball field design, kind of, I just wanted to show you for a second what the, what the design is for the larger athletic complex, which is this, which is to add a um, second baseball softball field to the left, and then lower left uh, softball field, and then uh, eventually a new soccer field with track around it as well. We're, we're lucky to have the soccer field that we have. It, it is oriented the wrong <laughs> yeah. direction, but um, when, they were, when they were putting the school up, um, the folks that were doing the excavating were kind enough to add a field mm -hmm. for us, and we were gracious enough to accept it, <laughs> um, and it, and it has been fine. But this, but this is the vision, really, for the complex. And here's just a, sort of a, a look at it at night, yeah. if you will. Now, again, this is off in the future. We're just talking about the baseball field right, right. now, but just to show folks sort of where, where we're headed with um, athletics in general at McKibney. Um so, um, so again, you know, this, this is, but this here, this field and this equipment is what is what you know is, is the need that we're trying to fill. Correct. Right now. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about money <laughs> for a second. Need uh, money. Yes. Yeah. Money, money, money. So, um, so this was really cool. So, um, early on, uh, almost right at the beginning of, of thinking about this, um, we were able to raise $400,000 from four very generous families. Yes. Um, and we said, all right, well, let's see what we can do with $400,000. So if you remove the soccer field for a second, the new soccer field, since we already have one, we said, okay, what can we do with this for 400,000? And this, <laughs> this is essentially what we were able to do. Yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, level it off, plant grass, get the drainage right, right. storm sore underneath. Um, it was, uh, shocking <laughs> to all of us but that's 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 what this cost but needed obviously needed. yeah gotta, needed. Do that. but we said we surely can do something for mm. baseball right so we pressed ahead and we were able to get um the infield um in place or the basics of an infield in place and here's a picture of what that looks like this is really exciting so this is a picture of the infield that's at mcgivney right now Yes. There's nothing else out there <laughs> yeah. except for this, but but we wanted to get this in place so it would settle and be in good shape, uh, potential practice on this, yes. this spring. Yeah, so we put the engineer dirt on there and got it uh, rolled in and compacted. And so, yeah, by next uh, spring, it'd be ready to go where you could have uh, do some infield drills and take infield and batting practice and such on that. Right, on right. We're, we're going to be ready to play, but it, but it could be right, ready to practice. Right. Yeah. And if you go back then and uh, take a look at the complex that we're building, um, what we need would need then is we need another four hundred thousand dollars to finish it to to actually um, you actually be able to practice there and to play there. So worked out to it's about a hundred thousand dollars that we need so we could practice this spring. Most of this is equipment, you know, and, and finishing off those mounds and having one of those big cages net cages like the cardinals use during batting practice to put out right, there, for safety you know? yes. yeah since mm -hmm. we don't have fencing yet correct um and then in the upper right there you can see three hundred thousand dollars to play so it actually put in irrigation fencing dugouts and such and such yeah. like that so so the four hundred thousand was a blessing <laughs> it was definitely a blessing to lay to to lay the groundwork if you will for for this investment um so you know we're also we're also very fortunate too that we sort of put together what the fundraising plan would be for this so th that 400 plus the other 400 we need is 800,000 if you look on the left there it shows the gifts that we need and what that would be per year so these are basically pledges over five years the number of gifts we would need to do this and we we're very fortunate to get those big gifts right off the bat yeah. you know Paul, yes. they're, they're usually very hard <laughs> yeah very hard to get sure and so we got the hardest part first and then we took it out to um uh, we took it out to uh, some uh, donors early on, and um, we were able to raise another hundred thousand dollars. Awesome! Very yeah. quickly, yes, getting some uh, fifty thousand dollar gift over five years, and twenty five thousand dollar gift, and and some uh, five thousand dollar gifts. We we're really fortunate. So when you make that um, when you make that adjustment here, you know, really just three hundred thousand dollars that we need, and uh, and these are the types of gifts that we are hoping and praying for. 
to finish this off. So at this point, our fundraising plan is, if you're listening to this, to prayerfully consider joining our ranks. Uh, and we're going to do some follow-ups with folks that we've presented with. And, you know, so we'll, we'll see where we are. We'll see where we are in early 2019. Um, I think we're in good shape now to practice this spring with the $100,000 or so that we've raised recently. And now it's just a question of how soon can we play out, out there as well. So, so please, you know, please, please consider um, helping us out. Um, you know, this, this is a growing program for McGivney. It's already having success. And they really do have this need to both play and practice on campus so that they can achieve the kind of success that our other our other varsity sports have been achieving. So thanks for listening to us. Paul, thanks for being with me today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Doug. You. Yeah. Thank and, you. And all you do for us and for the for the program. So, um, all right, folks, thanks again. God bless. We'd uh, love for you to prayerfully consider uh, being part of this and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.